What's up everyone? Welcome to my channel, where we talk about all things in the Apple ecosystem. I'm now four months into this journey, and the amount of support that I've received so far can't be thanked enough. Please keep it coming and I promise the content will only get better from here. Today we're going to be diving into the world of one of the most powerful apps that Apple has ever made, the Shortcuts application. It comes pre-downloaded on all iPhones, so you may have seen it before, but maybe you're not exactly sure what it is or how you actually go about using it. And I get it, opening it up for the first time can be an extremely intimidating task, and you might not know where to start. But believe me when I say there really is something here for everyone. And the best part about it is, you don't have to be tech savvy whatsoever in order to take advantage of it. And with some cool updates coming to shortcuts in the iOS 16.4 update, I thought it'd be a good time to make this video covering the topic. There are so many different ways that you can use shortcuts to automate everyday tasks in your life that the possibilities are practically endless. And with that being said, for me to try to cover every little thing in a single video would be near impossible. So with that in mind, in this video, the goal is to try to give you a short history of what the shortcuts application is, how to create a shortcut, and the different ways that they can be used. And I'm currently working on some future projects that will cover even more topics within the ecosystem, so do consider subscribing if that sounds interesting. So without further ado, let's dive in. Shortcuts are a visual scripting software that was introduced back in 2018 as part of iOS 12, and it has since become a powerful tool for automating tasks on basically all of your Apple devices. It allows you to create a custom shortcut that combines multiple steps and functions and automates them all into a single series with just a tap of a button or a voice command. Shortcuts can pull information from just about every aspect of all of your Apple devices and can even talk to a lot of the third-party apps that you might have downloaded. And I mentioned that in hopes that it will get you thinking about what automations you can make that could have a real impact on your day-to-day -day life. So if you've ever wanted to script repetitive tasks without having any prior knowledge of programming or coding, then this application might just be for you. And even if hearing those words scares you away, don't let it intimidate you. Being able to implement shortcuts in your daily life is going to enhance the relationship that you have with technology. And if you stick with me for a little longer, I'd like to break that down and give you a few examples that you might just be able to take with you that you can use in your day-to-day -day life. So now that you have a basic idea about what shortcuts are, you might be wondering, how do I get shortcuts? Well, there are a few different ways that you can go about this. The first way is simply making them yourself, and we'll talk a little bit more about that here shortly. But what if I told you that you didn't have to? What if I told you that Apple already made a whole library of shortcuts themselves that you could import directly into your iPhone with just a tap of your finger? And that's exactly what they've done. That's right, it's that easy. If you open up the app, you'll see the gallery icon, and if you tap that, it will take you to a curated collection of hundreds, if not thousands, of creative and useful shortcuts that you can start using right away without having to put any work into it. Let's import one together so you have an idea on how to go about it. Once you're in your gallery, you'll see different categories for some of the more popular shortcuts, as well as the search bar at the top so you can look for ones that are more specific. Let's see here. Uh, essentials. What's a shortcut? That sounds like a good one. Press the plus icon and now it's in your shortcut. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Creating your own shortcuts for the first time can seem like such a daunting task. And while it's true that some of the more advanced shortcuts can be extremely intricate and sometimes over the top on the difficulty scale, that's probably not going to be the case with the majority of them. And in order to give you an idea of how simple and easy they can be, let's build two of them together. Remember, the goal of almost all shortcuts is to make your life easier by taking all of the unnecessary steps it takes to get to your desired outcome and combining them into a single prompt that will automatically go through all of those steps for you. This first one is about as simple as they come. The goal for this shortcut is to open up and start a functional training workout tracker on my Apple Watch while simultaneously launching my Apple Music Library to a specific song and then shuffling my playlists. In order to set this up, we'll open back up our shortcuts application. In the right hand corner, we're going to press the plus icon to start creating a shortcut. This pulls up the page, but we'll actually build it out and input our actions. 
Now if we hit the add action button, it'll pull up a search bar along with different categories and actions and a separate tab for apps, but we're going to ignore that for just a little bit. For now, let's type in start in the search bar. This will bring up the different apps that can be started within the app. We're going to select start workout with the running icon. Now we're back to our build page where you'll notice that we have a few customizable options. That's going to be anything that's highlighted in blue. So if we click on Outdoor Run, it'll give us the option to choose any of the workouts that are available on our Apple Watch. And like I said earlier, our goal is to create a shortcut for functional strength training. So that's the one that we're going to select. Then with the other input, we can change it from an open goal to one with a time frame if we'd like. But for this purpose, we're going to keep it as an open goal. And believe it or not, we're already halfway done. Now we just have to get our music playing. And in order to do that, all we have to do is type in music in the search bar and then select Play Music. And again, we get an input where we can select whatever song we want our playlist to start with. And to avoid any copyright issues on this video, we're gonna select some royalty-free music by selecting Library, Songs, and scrolling all the way down to the very bottom and selecting one of these background instrumentals. Once again, we're back to our build page where we can even customize this a little bit more to our liking. If you click this little drop down arrow, it's going to pull up this menu where I can select the music shuffle or even select it to repeat. For now, we'll just turn the shuffle on. Of course, you can always customize the name, icon, and color of any shortcut by pressing the drop down arrow at the top of your screen. For this shortcut, we'll name it uh, Start Workout. We'll change the color to green so I can color code everything. I'll select the icon as this cool little emoji guy lifting weights. All you have to do from here is tap done in the right hand corner of your screens and congratulations, you've successfully built your first shortcut. And again, this example is about as elementary as you're going to find and they only get more advanced from here. We're going to attempt to tackle a few of those also. Real quick, I thought I'd share with you how you can add any shortcut to the home screen of your iPhone. Now there's a few different ways that you can accomplish this, but the way that we're going to add it is in the form of a widget. If you long press on your home screen, you'll get the plus icon in the top left. Go ahead and press that to bring up all your widgets. Now scroll down until you see shortcuts. When you select this, you'll get three different size options. One with a single shortcut, one with four different shortcut, and a large one that'll have your last eight shortcuts. Now I'll go ahead and select the one that we just created and click Add Widget. It's now visible on our home screen as a button and with a single tap of that button, our workout starts on our Apple Watch and our phone starts playing our music. This also works hands-free, which is how I intend on using it. Hey, start workout. Now that we've got the basics down, let's go ahead and take a look at some of those more advanced shortcuts. But first, a quick word from MacPaul. Before we dive in any further, I want to share with you the sponsor of today's video, MacPaul, and in particular, their flagship product, Clean My Mac. Over time, your device's RAM can become filled with temporary files, background processes, and other data that you may not need or want. This can slow down your device's performance and cause your Mac to run slow and sluggish. Clean My Mac is a one-stop shop to get your computer running like it did the day you bought it. In order to show you how easy it is to use, I put it to the test on an almost 10-year-old iMac that runs slower than your grandma. It's super easy to install, whether that's from the App Store or straight from the Mac Paul's website. After that, it takes no skill whatsoever. Just let the app do all the work and the results speak for themselves. And with multiple different subscription plans, they have one that works with every budget. To learn more or to try it out, check out one of the links in the description. More advanced shortcuts come into play when we start to add in stuff like if actions, text-to-speech, and pulling in information from multiple different apps like calendar events, weather, and location. The more complicated ones are definitely something that takes a little bit more playing around with in order to get them just right, and hardly do they ever work on the first try. And if you're just starting out with shortcuts, I recommend just getting in the app and playing around just to familiarize yourself with it. Click on each button and see where it takes you. See what options it gives you. For me, the difficulty is the part of it that makes it so rewarding when we get them dialed in and working just the way we intended. The goal of this advanced shortcut that we're going to set up is for our phone to give us a summary each morning of what's going on when our alarm is turned off. This one has quite a few more steps to it, so pay close attention. Let's dive in. The first thing we want our shortcut to do is to get any calendar events that we have. And in order to do that, we'll type in calendar into the search bar and look for the action, get upcoming events. 
for my summary each morning, I only want it to give me the first thing on my calendar for that day. So I'll keep the number of events to one, but feel free to change that number to whatever you'd like. But if I don't have any calendar events that day, I want it to tell me that also, so I know it's not just messing up. And for that, we'll throw a count and an if action into our build. We'll search count and select it, and then do the same thing for if. Now back on the build page, our calendar build is almost done. The count action is exactly how we want it, and we just need to change the if function a little bit. Let's change the condition to greater than, and then select our number as zero. Now let's add two text bars for each possible outcome. You should see them displayed in action suggestions at the bottom of your screen. If we long press on any action, it allows us to move it around. The first text bar we want to move right above the otherwise statement and place our second one right below it. In the first text bar, I'll type in your first event on your calendar today is, and then from the clipboard, select upcoming events. Once that's selected, just exit out of the pop-up screen for now. In that same search bar, type in after upcoming events and then select it one more time from the clipboard. Only this time, select start date from the top of the menu. In the second text bar, all we want to do is type in, there are no events in your calendar today. And feel free to change that wording however you like, it's not going to make a difference. And after that, we'll want our phone to tell us what the area weather forecast is for that day, and that can be accomplished by searching for weather and adding get current weather events. Now I also plan to add in some prompts to control some smart lighting in the home when the shortcut runs, but I only want that part of the shortcut to happen if I'm actually home. So in order to implement that factor in, I can pull the city details from my weather location by searching for weather again, but this time selecting get details from weather conditions, and then changing the detail input to location. And to pull the city from that location, I'll add a get details from location action and change the detail to city. Now the foundation is laid for whether or not this shortcut should control the smart lighting, but we'll finish that up here shortly. Next on our list is to finish up our weather by getting our phone to actually read us the highs and lows for the day and what it actually feels like outside. To get that started, we're going to type in number in the search bar and choose exactly that from the scripting options and then change the input to weather conditions. Now back from the build page, reselect that same weather conditions and from the drop down menu, choose high. For this to read out loud the temperature the correct way and not give us a super long decimal point, we'll need to add a rounding script. So again, we'll select the rounding script from the search bar and then it should read round numbers to one place. And then we'll repeat those same steps for it to read us the lows and the feels like temperature. Just to recap so far, we've got all of our calendar and weather inputs done, and all that's left to do is set our smart home scene that will control a few lights as well as add a speak function. If you don't have any smart home devices or you're just not interested in adding that, you can skip ahead to the speak function. Okay, for us to add that smart home scene and for it to only start on the days that we're actually going to be home, uh, next uh, we'll add an if statement and then change the input from rounded number to city. Then choose clear variable. We can now choose our input. If you tap it, you'll get this menu. And we'll hit select variable and scroll back up where we can once again select city from when we added it earlier. Next, we're gonna need to change the condition to contains. And in the text feature, type in the name of the city your home is located in. So since I live in Harrison, this script should read if city contains Harrison. Now after that, I'm going to add my smart home scene by searching for control in the search bar and selecting control Ultron home. And that's just what I named my smart home. Yours will read something different here. Now, if I choose scenes and accessories, it'll bring up the devices and scenes I have set up in my HomeKit app and I'll scroll down until I see the good morning scene. And just to give you a little insight, I'll put on the screen now what's all included in that scene. Now we're going to want to long press this and drag it right above the otherwise script. So now in order for our phone to read everything out to us, we need to add a text to speech box here at the end. We'll search for speak to text from the search bar and select it. 
and then clear the variable that says if result. And that allows us to put our own custom message in and feel free to put whatever your wording you want here. For mine, I'm gonna keep it simple. Good morning, Caleb. Today's date is, and then we'll start adding in some of our variables that we created earlier. So I'll select current date for my clipboard and I wanna change the time format to none and my date format to custom and everything in the field besides the day and month so it only tells me the date and not the year and time. Next, we'll have it read the weather. So I'll type, it currently feels like, and then I'll select tap variable from our clipboard so we can choose our feels like rounded number. This is the same way to do your lows and highs also. Now we can continue to type out our message. Today in and select our city from the clipboard, you can expect a high of and select our high rounded number and a low of and then do the same thing for our low rounded number and we'll finish off the sentence by typing for the day. Now we just need to translate our calendar events into speech. This one's pretty easy. All we have to do is select our magic variable tool and then scroll up and choose our result under calendar events. That way it'll choose one of the two scriptings depending on whether or not we have any events in our calendar for that day. Now let's give it a try and see if everything's working correctly. Good morning, Caleb. Today's date is Wednesday, 15 Mar. It currently feels like 38 today in Harrison. You can expect a high of 51 and a low of 20 for the day. Your first event is Golf League Mar 16, 2023 at 4.45 p.m. Everything looks fine. Now we can change the name of this shortcut to Morning Summary, and we'll change our emoji to something else. Uh, let's see here. Let's go with this alarm clock, and then we'll change the color to, let's say, uh, we'll choose orange. As it currently sits, all of this will take place if we tap the button or if we ask Siri to run Morning Summary. So what we wanna do now is set it up so it runs automatically when our alarm is shut off. Let's head over to the Personal Automations tab at the bottom of the Shortcuts homepage. From this page, you're able to see and edit any of your personal or home automations that you currently have. Let's go ahead and add this one by tapping the plus sign in the corner, and then select Create Personal Automation. There are so many different options to play around with here, but the one that we're looking for is Alarm. And then, when Alarm is stopped, now all we have to do is search for Run Shortcut and select the name of the shortcut we just created, Morning Summary, and then toggle off the Ask Before Running slider. You can also change the voice if you choose. For my preference, I'll choose Siri, but for some reason that's not set as the default within shortcuts, so we'll change that real quick down in the Speak to Text box. Now we're ready to wake up with the majority of the information we need to start our day. And I do really hope that you guys enjoyed this example of a more difficult shortcut. I've been using this one for more than a year now, and it's come in handy so many times, mainly because I put stuff in my calendar so far in advance, so it's nice to get that added reminder. And I can't exactly remember where I picked this one up from. It's either from the Shortcuts subreddit or from another YouTuber. If I can find out that information, I'll make sure to link credit in the description. The two examples that I showed you here today are really only scratching the surface of what's possible when it comes to the world of shortcuts. If you've made it to the end with me and now you have a better understanding of what shortcuts are and how to use them, then I'd have to say that I achieved my goal for making this video. I hope this has encouraged you to search out for even more shortcuts or even create a few yourself. Just get in there and play around with all the different functions and actions to see what your imagination is able to come up with. You never know in what ways you might be able to improve the quality of your day-to-day -day life. Let's get some dialogue going in the comments. I'd love to hear what some of your favorite shortcuts are and how you put them to use. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you always know when I drop some new content. You'd also be doing me a huge favor on my road to 500 subscribers, and I can't get there without your help. Thanks for watching. See ya!